Oh, we are going to watch Craig Wesco. Once again, we already saw Ken Yukihiro draft. We saw Alex Sittner draft. Ken ended up in a kind of a similar deck to what he drafted earlier in the morning, which was blue, black, Alex Sittner. We just saw it. Goblin theme deck looks pretty cool. Craig Wesco right in the middle of these two for context. So let's take a look at his draft. He uh, drafted a blue white deck this morning and admitted to me that it was his first draft of the format. So let's find out what happens here. We know that he likes to play white. He p first picked Shock last time. As you're kind of looking through the pack here, there's a Strangling Spores, and Horizon Scholar, a Volley Veteran there at the back. What do you like here, Paulo? I think I like, well, I like all the cards just both to the front. Uh, I expect him to take the Remorseful Cleric here. But I think, honestly, depending on what archetype you prefer, you could take any of Volley Veteran, Horizon Scholars, or Remorseful Cleric. I would probably just take the Cleric and, yeah, I think the Cleric is probably my, my pick here. I just really like it. I think Red-White is the best archetype and I like Black-White a lot as well and it fits in both of those. Whereas I feel like Horizon Scholar doesn't necessarily go well everywhere, and though it is a very powerful card, of course. All right, Remorseful cl uh, Cleric, the pickup here for Craig Wesco, 2-1 flyer for two, certainly in his wheelhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. And what? Oh, come on, Craig. <laughs> How could he do this to us? Diamond Mare there in the pack, a dragon's egg. Oh, there's a oh shock. No, shock. Come on, Must Craig. Take it. Star Crown Stag, though, in the pack, too. I do like that more than shock. Especially when you have a white card already. So I also like Gravedigger more than shock in general, I think, in this format, even though Gravedigger is not as, as good as it's been before, I think. Why do you say that? Speaking. Well, just a 2-2 two -two isn't as good anymore. You know, it used to be that you would get a 2-2 two -two and a creature back, and that 2-2 two -two would be worth a full card. And nowadays, everything is like a 5-5. Five -five. You're like, you just, people <laughs> laugh at your 2-2s. Two -two so, uh, Gravedigger is kind of like one and a half cards instead of two for one. It's still a good card. You still play it like, all the time you're black. You still take it aggressively, but I don't, I don't feel like I have to take Gravedigger, you know. So, Star Crown Stag, the pickup here for Wesco. And as, you know... I think BDM said earlier, it is his Patronus, too. <laughs> Take a look at that. Yeah, that it is. Plague Mare and Strangling Spores in this pack, as well as Nightmare's Thirst. What do you like here, Paulo? I like Plague Mare more. Uh, I, I think I go Plague Mare uh, after that, Nightmare's Thirst. And after that, I take the Spores. I think the Spores is kind of overrated. Uh, though we have seen me go pretty late in those drafts, so I yes. think it's more cor like correctly l lowly rated. You know, it's a good card, but it's not that good. So Plague Mare it is here for Wesco. So we've picked a couple of white cards and now black. White, black as a strategy in M19. How do you like it? Oh, I think it's very good. I think it's one of the top strategies for sure. And it is. it does rely on certain, you know, commons and uncommons that really bring the synergy together. You can't have a good stuff black-white deck, right? All the cards he has right now are good. They don't need any synergy to work. But for you to have a great black-white deck, you want those life gain synergies. Volcanic Dragon pulled to the front here. Goblin Instigator and Dwindle near the front of the pack. And how about a hasty 4-4 uh, four, four Flyer? Oh, yeah, it's very really good. Flyers are really good in this set as long as they don't die to shock or attack through Giant Spider. Anticipate, Anaki Ogre. Gutter Snipe here in the back, as well as a Knight's Pledge, which I know that Craig probably likes, an Inspired Charge as well. Yeah, here if he's favoring the red-white approach with the Volcanic Dragon, then Inspired Charge is pretty good. Uh, if he's playing black-white, then I like the Strangling Spores more. Uh, the Shadow Knight is also a consideration, but I think the Strangling Spores is better than that, even though, again, it's not fantastic or anything. I would have probably gone with the Spores because I think it's better than the charge but the car the red card that he has is also better than the black card that he has and i think red white is better so i'm definitely fine with that Ooh, an electrify left in this pack That'd be a pretty good pickup for him here yeah electrify is you know kind of like a better strangling spores uh sport is a card that you can use in combat to finish the creature off and then it kind of works like a combat trick you know instead of plus three plus three it's minus three minus three for their creature but Electrify would just do more things. Like if you play a Horizon Scholar, you electrify it. Yeah, as opposed to having to attack into it, hoping they block and then playing Strangling Spores, it's much worse. Electrify added to the pile for Wesco. Crash through C Cavalry Drillmaster. 
another Inspired Charge and a Hostile Minotaur in this pack. Yeah, Inspired Charge is a very important card for the red-white uh, red archetype, but it does suffer from being one of many cards that do that. You know, there's Trumpet Blasters, Heroic Reinforcements, there's Make a Stand, uh, there is Inspired Charge. So you, can't, you do run the risk of ending up with too many of that card. You don't have to prioritize it as early. So I think it's fine to take the two drop here. Cavalry Drill Master, very good at getting additional damage through early or late as well. Yeah. Catalyst Elemental and a Lightning Mare here. Lightning Mare, the one toughness, pretty precarious in a world of skeleton archers, that kind of thing, but fire breathing. Yeah, and I think this ship has already sailed for Crag, the worrying about one toughness thing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's when, true. When you were red white, <laughs> like you're just gonna he have one toughness creatures. He just gave that you know? up long, long ago. Yeah. He did take that plague mirror. That's which, true. You know, maybe he just never had any intention of playing it. <laughs> he he does not look like someone who can ever beat a plague mirror. No, I'll tell you that it is the anti Crag West Coast Invitational card. <laughs> oh, they're giving those out now. <laughs> Marauder's Axe, the pickup uh, for Craig. Is Red White the deck that wants the axe? Who wants the axe? Yeah, I mean, the axe is pretty good at making bad creatures good, like Falcons and Goblet Instigators. He does value that pretty highly. You know, we've seen, we've seen him second pick it in the previous draft. Explosive Apparatus adds a little bit of removal. Yeah, just Carl's Shock. Four times as expensive. Yes. No, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll play it in some decks, you won't play it in others. Nothing left in these packs here for Craig as we round out pack number one for Wesco. Currently sitting on two losses, by the way. So he really wants to 3-0 this pod. Yeah, he has to, right? I don't think... You don't think there's any... Ch yeah, I suppose if, if he gets a draw, like He could 2-0 and maybe, yeah, I got a draw. He did get a start 8-0, and 9-0, and rather, so he yeah. has good bringers. So it was, when I mentioned the anti-invitational card, you remember the invitational, right? If you ever won it, you got yeah. to make a card. Can you imagine they also made a card against the person who got last? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> so, like, the, the worst card for you ever. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. <laughs> Boros Recruit is this Greg Wesco's invitational card right here. <laughs> yeah, it's Boros Recruit and Plague Mare. <laughs> what would be your anti-invitational card, Paulo? Probably Invisible Stalker if you somehow made it uncounterable. So like, my you know. invitational card is your anti-invitational <laughs> card. Yes, exactly. We're, we're quite a pair up here. Yeah, I would say Chromium, except that Chromium is like seven mana, Asper Caller, so I True. Kinda d yeah. you know, I can't really dislike it, but so I'm going to go with Invisible Stalker, yeah. What do you make of what Craig has put together so far in pack one? I think he has a nice collection of cards. His deck is not nearly as focused as Alex Sinder's deck was, for example. That was just a goblin deck after right. pack one with a Banefire and... But I think he is in a happy spot. He has two drops. He has, you know, powerful cards that can win the late game. He has a removal spell. The Volcanic Dragon is really good. Uh, he has Inspired Charge already. So I think he's in a good spot. He, I, I doubt he's unhappy about what he has. He's certainly in a much better spot than he was last draft That's when true. we watched it. Yeah, so I think, he, yeah, I think he's okay with that. All right, Craig here getting ready for pack number two, solidly in red-white, which around the convention center seems to be the consensus uh, for a lot of people that it's their favorite deck. Not everybody, though. Yeah, it does feel like we're seeing a lot of it. I don't think there is as much as our draft was indicating. Because in the draft that we've seen, there are like half the people are playing red-white. That is definitely not true. You know, it's still draft. It doesn't matter how much you want a color combination. You have to take what you get. Unless you're Craig Wesco and you open Shock, then, it, <laughs> then it, it does matter what you want. But, you know, in general, you, he did end up being forced out of Red White in the first draft, he for did? example, yeah. even if he really wanted to be in it. So I think we're just, we happen to see a lot of people who were in a good spot to be Red White. I think Alexander was in a good spot to be Red White, and Craig Wesco is in a good spot to be Red White right now, which doesn't mean everyone's going to be Red White. That Boris Raku just still staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he intimidating you? Kinda. <laughs> but like that, that <laughs> that's, that's, I don't know if that's bad. Eh, that is better. <laughs> Boros Charm. Yeah. That, that guy's kind of just like looking over his shoulder at yeah, you. Yeah, he's just like, eh, whatever, you know. 
Nicole oh. Bolos. Oh, it's no. only a checklist card. So disappointing. <laughs> Craig just got to check the back. <laughs> no, it's just a checklist card. So this pack kind of dead for Craig here. Yeah, this is a very disappointing pack. Dwarven Priest? Host uh, hostile Minotaur? Yeah, they're both bad. But do you want bad defense or bad offense? Like offense. Or do you just take a Golgaria card? Poison Tip Archer. Yeah, probably not that. Declare Dominance is probably the best card in the pack. We've seen that be a one-sided Wrath a lot, but there's, Craig is not going to play it. No. Unlike Alex, who was kind of open about his second color, Craig is just red-white at this point. Yeah, Hostile Minotaur, a 3-3 three, three with Haste. A tiny bit better Hill Giant here for Craig Westco, pack two, pick one. Now this is a little bit better here. Pegasus Courser, Militia Bugler. There's Rustwing Falcon. Yeah, Pegasus Courser, really good. Um, Militia Bugler, also really good. So he was happy to take any of those. I think the Pegasus is a, li a little bit better in an aggressive deck. The Bugler is a better defensive card, I think, as a 2-3 Vigilance. Uh, you know, when you're getting a cheap blocker in the late game, that's okay. But the, if you get a 2-2 in the late game to attack, it's not nearly as good. And the Pegasus just attacks very well. Pegasus Courser, the pick for Craig Wesco here as we start off pack number two, draft number two, here of the day at GP Minneapolis, work our way towards the top eight. Craig likely has to win out on this draft, 3-0. Yeah, there is a chance he can just win the first two. Uh, Ooh, shock. Ooh, Valiant Knights. Oh, wow. How about a rare? Yeah, that's pretty good. You don't even need any knights no. for it to work because you just play it on turn four and then you can attack, for, you know, it, they really can't block. You can pay three white, white knights to control gain, double strike until end of turn. Oh, no, don't do this to oh, me. Oh, the shock. Don't do <gasps> it. He's not going to. He's <laughs> going to take the knight. How can he not? He's just, just toying with our feelings right now. Yeah. Valiant Knight, by the way, it pumps up your Cavalry Drill Master. Which it does. Craig does have one of. That is a knight. Yeah, and y if you get, you know, the, the Cavalry or something like a Knightly oh, Valor. Oh, Cavalry and Knightly Valor. Yeah, there's the equipment that makes things into an eye. It's pretty good. Not a lot for him here either. Brawl Bash, Ogre, and Rakdos colors there at the back of the pack. Another hostile Minotaur. We don't want that. Tectonic Rift. Whew, maybe is your 23rd card in a Manolith. Yeah, we've seen Tectonic Rift being played. I think BDM and Paul Ritza were talking about how it was in the winning deck. Yeah, I can see at, it as a one of. GP. Yeah, you do want some cards like that. In a deck like this, you would rather they be Trumpet Blast and Inspire Charges. Uh, and, you know, but if you don't have enough of those, you can definitely play the Tectonic Rift. Catalyst Elemental, a Rustwing Falcon. There's another Teutonic Rift as well as an Act of Treason. Act of Treason, kind of a card you want more in the red-black deck here in M19? Oh, yeah. If you have Sacrifice Synergies, it's a very good card, like Ravenous Harpy or, you know, Oracle Dark Dweller or Dark, like, Blood Divination, cards like that. Uh, they really make Act of Treason great. The Ogre, you get to sacrifice a, a creature too. But if you're aggressive, you can play it. It is... Uh, another type of card like the Tectonic Rift, you know, that will help you close out the game. And there are a lot of them going around. The Rustwing Falcon here for West goes to pick up last turn. And we are not really seeing the red and white flow very strongly from this direction. No, but at the same time, we're not really seeing anything, anything? flow very strongly. I think the best card there is clearly Druid of the Cow. Yeah. Right? But it's not like, you know, oh, I really should have been green. What, what happened here? You know, I think he, he's fine in the cars that he is. The packs are just very shallow. Act of Treason is what he takes out of that last pack. Fire Elemental here. Another Dwarven Priest. Yeah, lots of vanilla creatures here. They were just seeing, like... Hired Blade. Centaur Courser, the most vanilla of them all. Yeah. Probably the best of them all, too. Yeah. Like, the, the most efficient uh, cost-wise, but... Yeah, I think a lot, a lot of the time when you were drafting, you're like, wow, my deck looks bad or I should be a different color. But draft is, you know, a zero-sum thing. You are playing inside the pod. This is not magical land where you play, you know, in the league against someone who is in a different draft. So if there are no cards in the That's packs, true. well, no one's getting any cards. So relative power level is a lot more important than absolute power level. And while I think his absolute power level right now isn't that high, 
I don't think he's actually passing a lot of great cards either. So his probably still feeling fine. Trumpet Blast here for Craig Wesco. So now he has two different Pump the Team effects in his deck. The other being Inspired Charge. Fraying Omnipotence comes back around. Just got to take a read of it. And no, it's not something that you have to worry about, Craig. <laughs> Unless you're playing Two-Headed Giant. In which case, you've got to worry a lot. Oh, yeah. Does that just end the yeah, game? Yeah, it's done. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting card. Do you think it would be changed? Eroded? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rustwing Falcon here. Number two for Craig Wesco. <laughs> Pretty cute. <laughs> Revitalize. I've, <laughs> I've played against a few people who had a Revitalize that I didn't expect. <laughs> totally lost, which people have not been playing in M19. Yeah, it is very expensive. I feel like Revitalize is a card that you can play if you have enough life gain synergies. You're never looking forward to playing it, but, you know, put enough for Jonas Pride Mages and Resplendent Angels in your deck that maybe you, you can play. The opportunity cost isn't that high. You draw a card. But there's so many active reasons. I know there's been like six of them going yeah. around the table here. And Rustwin Falcon, on the card on the screen here, is a card that is much better than I thought it would be originally. Because normally those, you know, one mana, one one flyers that exist in every set are kind of a trap. Right? They right. just don't do enough. They don't have enough impact in the game to justify playing. But being a one two means it doesn't die to a lot of things. Yeah, Suntail Hawk is bad, for example. Being a one two, it means it doesn't die to a lot of the things that would normally incidentally kill, like Skeleton Archer, Plague Mare, you know, cards like that. And also, this is a set that has equipment, and it's a set that has cards like Nightly Threat. Sure. So it, it, it is actually a much better card than I was expecting. Taking a look through here, what Craig Wesco has assembled over the course of two packs. A nice little aggressive red-white deck. Nothing, you know, to write home about, certainly, but not too bad either. Yeah, I think his second pack was really harsh for him. And it wasn't even necessarily his fault. No. Right? He no. opened his first pack, and there's just no good cards for him. You know, it's not like he has badly positioned in his cars. There just, there just wasn't anything. Like, the best card he took this back was maybe a Pegasus Courser? Yeah. Oh, no, no the Valiant Knight. Knight. Yeah. So that, that is always interesting when you're like, well, you don't see any good cards in your colors for, like, four packs. And then you see a first pickable card. You're like, well, this is frustrating because I am in the right colors or this card would not have gotten to me. So no one before me is taking this color. But I still didn't see anything <laughs> before that. <laughs> yeah, certainly a bit of a dry spell there in pack number two. <laughs> Paul Reitzel on the card viewer <laughs> this round. Thank you for that. So what is he looking for here come around pack number three? I think he needs a little bit of power. Right? He's, well, that is kind of, you know, yeah, he's looking for bomb rares like yeah, everyone else. Yeah. But I don't think he necessarily needs anything. Like, he's a bit short on removal. He has one electrified. Yeah, that, like, he would love a Johnny. A Johnny called shot. He, yeah, he would love the Manning Dragon. He would love, you know, Banefire. Any good rare in, Lena. in his colors. He would be like, yeah, Lena too. He, he would like any powerful card. Latless. Yeah. Any, anything that you, in his colors, if you put a, a gold or orange symbol in there, he's probably <laughs> he's happy fine. to take. He will also be happy to take, you know, even Luminous Bonds. He I'm doesn't have any yet. Something as simple as, like, Gallant Cavalry, for instance. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going to get more creatures to use our Anthem effects with. Trash yeah. Master. I mean, yeah, that would be a good card. He's, he'll probably be disappointed to first pick it, but it does work very well with his Valiant Eye. Resplendent Angel. Gosh, I love this card. He can to get another Valiant Knight. That would be cool, too. Oh, and yeah. And then start yes. prioritizing his knights. That'd be kind of sweet. Though all the knights are already pretty good, so it's hard to like prioritize them more. It's different than the goblins, which yeah. I think you know they kind of change in value if you have the 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 volley veteran. The knights are just good. I'm excited to see how this goblin deck does that we saw drafted by Alex Sittner just before we got on camera. Oh, uh, that deck looked very good to me. Yeah, volley yeah. veteran shoot you for mm, four. It could happen. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Pack number three for Craig Wesco. Draft number two here at GP Minneapolis Corset 2019 draft. Red White is the name of the game for Wesco. This draft, he was blue white in the last draft, went one and two. Felt very medium about his deck, which is accurate. <laughs> 
which is, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think this deck is, you know, it is really an unfortunate situation because in the previous deck, I felt like, well, Craig could have been green. Yeah, there was another you know? option. But now I don't really know what he could have been. No, it's, it's I don't just, know. Again, he did get that Veil and Light very late, so it's not like people were scooping up all the, the white cards. Oh! <laughs> There you go. Okay, there it is. A Johnny, adversary of tyrants. Wow, Craig. Yeah, the Planeswalker is, is here. That is a great card to pick up. And I now he's already kind of covered in the power department. Obviously, he, you always yeah. want more power, yeah. you know. Not going to say no to another Johnny. But, Dang. Uh, but he's really happy w with this right now. And, yeah, I think the only thing missing from his deck at this point is a couple of removal spells. If he can take like a Luminous Ball and a Lightning Strike, for example, he's already happy. All right, a Johnny adversary of tyrants. You knew that Craig was going to be in this draft, and you went and found him. <laughs> there he is. Before we sat down here, someone's like, I think something exciting happens during Craig Wesco's draft. And I was like, oh, and a Johnny? <laughs> 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 nice. All right, here we go. Let's continue the mission, Craig. Improve this deck. Sun Cleanser's not really going to do it. <laughs> oh, not a lot yeah. of this pack, actually. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping for the second of Johnny here. Oh, that would be, su oh, that would be <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah, there's a Fire Elemental Suspicious Bookcase. I love the card. Love the flavor. Not great in Craig's Yeah, deck. Oh, it is a very interesting card. Absolutely. The, the whole concept of it. Yeah, I, I, I love it. So the Sun Cleanser, Craig's taking a read of it. But yeah, it doesn't really do anything except be a 1-4. <laughs> yeah. Well, he'll, he'll take it. Sure. Is it a knight? I, I don't think it is. Sun Cleanser doesn't look to be riding any <laughs> this type of beast or horse. It's oh, a it's cleric. it's a human cleric. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are, not, are knights in magic just riders? I or think so. Do, do we have, like, title knights? Well, you know, you know yeah, there's... Like Sir, for example. Oh. Is there, like... <laughs> is there a, a card in magic that's, like, Sir somebody or other? That That's a knight? <gasps> I don't know. I don't know. Good I think all, all the knights are, are riders, or for the most part, right? Magic does not really use. I like some. Oh, oh, here we go, Sir Chandelar. <laughs> <laughs> remember, Sir Chandelar. Remember and stand firm. A four seven, Ooh. for six. Nice. I have to memorize that for the Legends draft. <laughs> I might be playing with that card. There in you the go. Week. There you go. <laughs> okay. I assume that's from Legends. <laughs> it looks like a I card mean, that would be from Legends. It looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a Gallant Cavalry. Yeah, nice. that, that is just very good in the archetype already. Uh, and it's especially good with, you know, Valiant Knight. Absolutely. Good with Valiant Knight, good with Trumpet Blast, good with Inspired Charge. Bogart Brute near the back, too, which has been a pretty good little three drop for these types of decks so far in this format. Yeah, here, this is mostly a curve consideration thing. I think Gallant Cavalry is better in his deck, and he probably thinks that too, but he, at this point he's thinking, do I have too many four drops? Like, I can't just have a hand of, you know, a Johnny, Valiant Knight, and Gallant Cavalry. No, that hand actually does look pretty good. But, like, I can't just have yeah, 104 drops. I might sure. have to take the worst card, but, you know, he, he ends up taking the better card, which I think is fine. He's not really flooded on the four drops. So there's a Regal Bloodlord in the back of the pack that Craig is sad to see all the way back there. Tormenting Voice and Dragon Egg. The only thing's kind of available in his color pair. Ooh. He's taking the Bloodlord. I'm mean, hoping that is a hate draft. Yeah. You know, I, I really am hoping that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Come think on, he would splash. just be splashing it. Goblin Instigator left here. Draconic Disciple. Just constantly filtering through Wesco's hands. And there's Plague Mare number two. There's so many Plague Mares. And we saw Alexander take two. This draft is sick. We could potentially see four Plague Mares in the table and no one ending up with a, with a Black Drafter. Yeah, that's you know, true. In, in this case, he does take the Goblin Instigator and passes that Plague Mare. Yeah. It is a very good card in this archetype. And I think that's probably the same Plague Mare that's sitting there and ended up hate drafting. So it works out very well for Craig, who gets the hate draft but doesn't have to pay the cost. Wow, so many good Black cards left in this pack. Fell Spectre... Oof. So what's he going to take? There's an Evoke Divine H Havoc Devils. Liliana's Contract. Ah! <laughs> you get to draw four cards. You do get to draw four cards. Yeah, here is the question of how many playables does Craig have? You know, if he's already happy with his stack, he can take the Cyborg card, which he did. 
And but otherwise, you would have to take the Havoc Devils because I don't think Invoke the Divine is particularly main deckable. Here's an ogre here. If Craig wants a four two for three, a mighty leap and a Johnny's welcome. Well, you've got a Johnny. Might as well take the welcome. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I would just take the ogre here. I think the ogre is pretty good. The red alpine grizzly. Yes. Oh yeah, alpine grizzly. That was a lot better though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was ferocious. <laughs> ferocious. Or, or, or the ability. Well, yeah. Trumpet blast number two. Are you gonna run three effects like trumpet blast in your deck? There he is. Yeah, I love it. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I think trumpet blast. Uh, he'll probably run all three. Yeah, okay. he doesn't have any other pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we could fall down the cute rabbit hole here. Adorable oh, yeah. kitten. What's the cutest card? Gnarled Pack. The cutest of all time, obviously. Which one? Gnarled Pack. Oh, can we get Gnarled Pack on the on the? I love Gnarled Pack. They're just little bears with horns. Look at them! Look at them! Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> Paulo's not sold. <laughs> I mean, I do not buck, you know, cute as of all time. <laughs> That's a very high bar. I bet they sound like this. They're cute. <laughs> I, I'd have a gnarly back. Yeah, you know, me too. Can you imagine taking that little chubber on a walk? It just kind of waddles down the street. <laughs> it's hard to know how big they are from this that picture. That is a great like point. Like, they could just be they gigantic be monsters. Huge. Or they Ooh. could be, like, tiny little puppies, you know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> Tormenting voice as we round out pack number three. All right. Craig Wesco's draft, red, white. Overall, I would say definitely more successful than his first draft of blue, white. Oh, for sure. Not, not that hard. No. But, you know. <laughs> no, not really. But, I mean, you love drafting the red, white deck. I uh, do. I think it's the best deck. How do you think this version of it stacks up? I think it's about average. You know, I think he got, he was in a good color combination. He got pretty unlucky in pack two where he didn't see much. That's true. And then he opened on a Johnny to make up for that. But so if you, if you even things out, I'd say he got average, you know, expectations. A very bad pack, but then a good rare. And I think his deck is okay. He would probably rather have a little bit more removal than he currently does. I believe he, he only an has an Electrify and that's it. So he would gladly trade something for a Luminous Bond structure, but his scars are good. He has, you know, three Trumpet Blast effects, he has Token Makers, he has a Johnny, Valiant Knight. So I think he'll be happy with his deck. All right, well, we'll see how it turns out coming up after this.